On this sunny day, a black car lingered in the parking lot for a while, despite having people inside. The driver, drenched in sweat, genuinely didn't understand whether the man should really go there. In response, he was told that, as sad as it might sound, the boss's orders are law. These words even slightly offended him, as he had never spoken against them, and there was no need to remind him unnecessarily. In any case, he was ready to do whatever the boss demanded, even if it meant undergoing an operation to reduce a certain organ of his. As soon as the respectable man in the suit entered the clinic, he began to attract general attention. But it wasn't just curiosity. People were clearly frightened. As for the man himself, he concluded that enough ordinary people came here so there was no reason to worry. And while people around were convinced that a gangster was among them, he decided to just sit quietly. At one moment, someone called out to a person named Kanju Gan. The nurse desperately searched for someone with that name. But to her surprise, no one responded. Suddenly, one of the attendees stood up at her calls. Yet her joy was short-lived. The person who introduced himself as Kan Jugan looked as if he wasn't someone to be rude to. In fact, it felt very unusual for him to hear his real name after so much time, as he was usually called Kite. In any case, he was led to an office where he already had a scheduled meeting. The doctor, who seemed to shine unlike the others, was not frightened at the sight of the patient and simply offered him a seat nearby. And while he rummaged through the computer, Kan assured himself that his first thought upon seeing this person was that he was very handsome. However, he was also curious about the mask that, for some unclear reason, hid an undoubtedly beautiful face. Suddenly, he was addressed by name again, making the protagonist realize he might have been staring too intently at him. The doctor, after a short pause, wondered if the man had gone mad. As it turned out, he was quite surprised by the request for this operation, especially since there were no medical records. After all, he had heard many stories about people wanting to enlarge themselves. But it was the first time he saw someone asking for something as absurd as a reduction. In any case, he was ordered to undress right now. The doctor was already convinced that usually when men said such things, in reality there was nothing special. But this seemed not to be the case. Even through the clothes, it was noticeable that this was not an ordinary situation. But anyway, he once again assured himself that this was all there could be. Eventually, the man did what was asked of him, meanwhile wondering if it was really too big. What he saw truly shocked the doctor, for in his entire life he had never seen anything like it. Examining the patient up close, he began catching himself having not very good thoughts. At one moment, he noticed that there was also a tattoo. As for Kan himself, he meanwhile wondered with each passing second if the treatment really proceeded in such a manner. The other's face was too close, making it hard to keep himself together. Suddenly, the doctor grabbed his hand, asking for an honest conversation. In fact, he wanted to confess that he was seeing something so fascinating for the first time in his life. No matter how much he thought about it, reducing something so perfect seemed like a real crime. Nevertheless, the operation was necessary. Uttering these words, the gangster couldn't shake the thought that this person was truly beautiful. In any case, the doctor now began to plead not to perform this operation. But it soon became clear that no matter how much he begged, his wish was unattainable. The next moment, it seemed as if he was upset about what he heard. Unexpectedly, he inquired whether the patient used his fists at work, which was actually true. And when the conversation turned to the date of the operation, the doctor suggested today. After all, their surgery schedule was already overcrowded. The next question was whether the man already had a lover, to which he gave a negative answer that satisfied the doctor. On that note, their consultation ended, and so the visitor was politely asked to leave the room. Left in the corridor, the gangster couldn't shake the feeling that something was suspicious here. Meanwhile, the master of the office could only smile slyly, for a cunning plan was already forming in his head. Ultimately, that evening, the man arrived at the clinic as planned. Yet at one moment, he began to feel as if he were entirely alone there. This was truly peculiar, for they had clearly agreed upon this hour. And yet the doctor was indeed present. When he inquired why he was alone, it turned out all the nurses had already been sent home. After all, the doctor was confident he could handle the operation single-handedly. In that case, all that remained was to invite him to the operating table. Can couldn't reconcile himself with where he was, for it felt like stabbing himself. Still, he was somewhat afraid. But the thought that it was for the boss's sake soothed him. Then the doctor appeared, assuring him he would now administer the anesthetic. But before he could finish, the patient began to close his eyes. Upon awakening, 
The gangster first saw an unfamiliar ceiling above him. Realizing what was happening, he asked the doctor to stop hitting him. Such suddenness caught him somewhat off guard. In turn, the patient inquired if the doctor was all right, as he seemed to be sweating. Nevertheless, it was fine. The operation had simply been more extensive than initially expected. But despite everything, all had gone splendidly. Fully regaining his senses, Khan surmised that during the operation, they had only removed his trousers. There was a slight tingling, but he could endure it. Suddenly, he saw something he absolutely did not expect. At first glance, it seemed as if nothing had changed. But the doctor quickly refuted this. His organ, or rather its original form, had been quite large from the start. But ultimately, it had become smaller by a whole one and a half centimeters. Perhaps on the screen it looked large, but in reality, the difference was not so significant. Hence, it seemed as if nothing had changed. When the man mentioned a slight pain, the doctor assured him it shouldn't last long, and to be certain, it would be best for him to visit again tomorrow. The patient would need to come over several days, preferably in the evenings, just like today. Today was a weekday, so he was certain that asking him to come at nine in the evening might be too late. Perhaps it would be better to request he arrive at half past seven. As he searched for the right approach, the gangster himself declared he would come tomorrow at nine o'clock. Thus, four days passed, and Can began to realize that the ceiling above him had become very familiar. But today, to his surprise, he saw no one nearby, only heard a loud call from the doctor, requesting that if he was awake, he should come out. As soon as he left the ward, he was immediately offered a hot beverage. Only it was not appropriate, for he did not actually like coffee. But in truth, this did not concern the doctor. He continued to stand with eyes full of hope. Resisting this was not as easy as one might wish, and so he had no choice but to endure. At that very moment, a sudden realization came to him of how special the person before him was. Until now, everyone had been frightened by his mere appearance, but this doctor always treated him kindly, as if he wasn't afraid of him at all. In any case, the urologist noted that he had found something interesting in his trousers, and it was a very strange little leaf of unclear purpose. Not long before, a subordinate nicknamed Swallow had assured that they were preparing for the operation and had therefore visited a renowned fortune teller. Another, nicknamed Spaniel, affirmed that regardless of any consequences, Kite would still remain their brother. His colleagues blindly believed in such things and so had given him this, but the protagonist had wondered what sense there was in it. Perhaps it really worked, for there was less pain than expected. When asked what it was, Can replied without hesitation that it was a talisman to reduce pain. On that dark night from the closed hospital, one could hear very loud and somewhat eerie laughter. The doctor was genuinely surprised that the gangster believed in such talismans and had even brought them with him. Finally, he decided this was the perfect moment to ask whether the man was not afraid of him. In response, he inquired whether he had any reason to be afraid at all. Despite the fact that others might be frightened by such things, the doctor was already accustomed to stern faces. But even among them all, Khan stood out for his beauty. As he was leaving, he suggested that gangsters usually have other names. That was true, and he was now in the presence of Kite, a nickname he even liked. The man had a similar thought, but still preferred to ask him to call him by his real name. What he heard caught him off guard, so it wasn't even clear how to comment further. With each passing second, he seemed to be falling deeper into a bottomless abyss. Already in the car, the gangster suddenly realized that he hadn't been told to come tomorrow. Nevertheless, he wished, as always, to go there. At one point, the man woke up, realizing he had just dreamt an improper dream where he was with that very doctor. However, it was just a dream, and Swallow was now informing him that they had finally arrived. When he apologized for the delay, his colleague suddenly broke into a sweat, adding that he could sleep a little more. Such a strange reaction, of course, surprised Kite, as there seemed to be no reason for it. It turned out that he wasn't the only one who had awakened from sleep. On the same day, the gangster decided to practice some strikes. His hands were adorned with new wounds from such powerful blows, and he realized that he was actually dissatisfied. Otherwise, there was simply no reason for him to have such dreams. At the sounds of blows, his colleague finally woke up, curious as to why he was training at such a time. But Kite's appearance could now frighten anyone, yet he himself seemed indifferent. So he said that it was necessary to go to the doctor. The next day, at the same hour, the man came to the urologist, but only a note awaited him. It stated that his attributes were meant to bring benefit to the world, for it was a special gift from God. 
and so he should never think of reducing it. Along with all this, there was also a thank you for the food. Arriving at the hospital, the man expected to meet the familiar face in the reception area as usual. But to his surprise, he encountered someone else. Rising from his seat, an unfamiliar staff member asked if he was Kan Ju Gan. Upon receiving confirmation, he mentioned hearing that he always visited Min Jech Jun at this time, and only now did the gangster learn the doctor's name. In any case, Min had asked to give him a letter should he appear. The man was noticeably surprised that, in this day and age, someone still wrote letters. Yet what was written there stirred a significant surge of anger within him. Very soon, Kite was requesting a month's leave from the boss. When asked what had happened, he assured that a rat had betrayed him and dared to flee afterward. Thus a week passed, and new difficulties began to emerge in Min Jesh Jun's life. At a meeting, an employee of the information agency named Khan Hengi was preoccupied with something he shouldn't have been. And when they finally got his attention, he remarked that the girl was indeed very attractive. But immediately after saying that, he retracted his words, since beside him was a man who had no interest in women. For this reason, he recalled his words that no matter how handsome Min was, he wasn't his type at all. But in response, Min indicated that trivialities didn't interest him. For not long ago, he had encountered something he couldn't even have dreamed of. And although his friend didn't believe him outright, it didn't change the fact that the man could not only see it, but it was actually bitter that it would never happen again. Their intriguing discussion ended with Hengi suddenly lowering his companion's head. And when he had to explain, he quietly pointed out that the man who had just entered was the 58-year-old Kim Ente, who lived off the cafe owner's generosity. At the moment when Min was asked for his opinion, he was already gone. His friend couldn't believe that once again it wasn't what was needed. He couldn't be so certain just by glancing, especially since they hadn't seen each other for 20 years. But Min didn't even wish to look more closely. Yet he immediately claimed that Kan was saying this because it was his employee. In return, he was reminded that for over 10 years, Min had been wandering in search of his own father, whose face he didn't even remember, and just to watch from the sidelines how he suffered. He sincerely felt sorry for the man, for it was strange that someone with a good education couldn't find a job. As he had heard, senior colleagues had already suggested working together. In any case, he was told that much had already been done, so perhaps it was time to finally give up. But Min refused to listen to such nonsense, knowing that it wasn't the person he needed, and in general, there was nothing terrible if next time he had to waste money in vain. At that moment, he realized that if they hadn't been classmates, they would be speaking quite differently now. And when he was addressed again, Min turned fiercely, beginning to threaten. But as it turned out, his former classmate decided to gently remind him about the advance payment. These words made him change his anger to genuine disgust toward this person. And when the information agent received what he needed, he hurried off to his own affairs, assuring that he would get in touch if he found anything new. Meanwhile, Min concluded that even if he had to spend more money, it would be worth changing agencies. Still, he couldn't have imagined that person could say something like that. Perhaps the time had come to stop filling his head with unnecessary thoughts. After some time, he caught himself thinking that finding someone turned out to be a very costly endeavor. As Hengi had said, it would be hard to find a job until his father was found, and perhaps he would have to work as a doctor on the night shift. Reflecting on this, it became clear that he would no longer be able to meet someone like Khan Jugan. It would have been truly wonderful if that person hadn't been a gangster. And now, pondering this, it became evident that he shouldn't have left that note after all. For if they caught him, they might beat him to death. In any case, he was now in a completely different city, and it was unlikely anyone could find him here. Thinking along these lines, as if a sign of fate, a familiar figure appeared before him. It was that very gangster who seemed to simply wish to meet the doctor once more. This was the last thing Min could have expected, so such a meeting caught him off guard. When asked how he was doing, the bandit, displaying restrained anger, posed a similar question. To avert possible consequences, it was suggested they first step inside. The gangster followed him directly to his home, where before entering, he inquired whether his guest wanted something to drink. Meanwhile, his hands trembled as if already anticipating death. He hadn't even turned around when he was swiftly thrown to the ground with a single sharp movement. The blow was so forceful that a wound immediately opened. And all he could see now were the muscular chest muscles, the first sign of his type. But regardless, Khan wanted to know how many times this had been done. How many times it had been done. Something he could never admit to anyone in his life. 
All that remained now was to plead with him to calm down before it became too late. Yet his guest had no intention of heeding the advice, instead urging him to answer the questions, as patience was something he was always short of. For this reason, the protagonist raised a single finger as if to signify just once. But it was only on one hand, while the other indicated that things were not so simple. This statement caused the gangster to freeze, trying to digest what he had just heard. As his anger continued to build, the so-called doctor pleaded for him to stop, to avoid sad consequences, for he was in pain. And after all, everything was, in the end, all right. These words, though only slightly, managed to make Khan question the righteousness of his actions. In the end, he truly found himself on the ground, with thoughts that he might die right here, facing an actual gangster. In any case, he decided to ask, just in case, what punishment did their organization assign for deceiving one of its members? Usually, such people demanded money, but Min could not offer any. He would likely be beaten harshly, though if luck favored him, he might regain the use of his arms and legs in a few weeks, except they offered him a penalty a hundredfold greater. And if the doctor had already done this ten times, he would have to pay a thousand. Min genuinely could not understand why this man had begun to undress concluding that perhaps he simply preferred to beat people while unclothed. However, he was then invited to undress as well, since it would be more comfortable without clothes. Still, they could have started with something simpler. He was genuinely curious how the doctor would react to this. Gradually, Min began to understand where it was all leading and realized he wouldn't be able to resist, even if he wanted to. Regardless, the gangster assured him that the doctor had gravely miscalculated, as he had been coming here for an entire week not for some friendly activity. But no matter how he turned it, all that could be heard now was the request to repeat it once more. However, as it turned out, he followed two rules. The first, an eye for an eye, and the second, to repay a hundredfold whatever was received, leaving his partner now with no choice. They would be expected to endure a thousand times, and today, it seemed, the first of that tally would be settled. After some time, it was decided to take a shower, to wash away at least a portion of the exhaustion. He never thought he would be doing something like this with a guy, yet it turned out not to be so bad. Still, he was genuinely curious if he would continue to see the doctor in similar dreams. No matter how he looked back on it, it was truly beautiful. From the very beginning, gender was of no concern to him. When he learned of the doctor's actions, more than the fact that he had something with a guy, it was the doctor's escape that irritated him. Unlike in those dreams, he expected his fascination to cool once he saw it with his own eyes, but it turned out quite the opposite. The next day proved to be a difficult one for the doctor. Last night's events had completely worn him out. He had no strength left, and if he had to keep repaying his debt this way, at this moment, it felt as though he might actually die from it, as there was still a long way to go. In any case, his partner returning from the shower suggested they go out and grab a bite. He was genuinely irritated that, in truth, he wasn't as angry as he could have been, all due to one rather attractive detail in this person. Eventually, he remarked that thanks to someone, he had no energy left, so he'd have to let him eat alone. But these words only provoked the gangster further. He was offering him a choice, yet if the debt had to be repaid tonight, it would be wise to eat. Such words, of course, unsettled Min. As a result, he wondered aloud if he was even dealing with a human, as one only needed to look at him. He barely finished his sentence when he was interrupted by a sudden pain in his lower back. In any case, now it was time to gather their belongings. As last night they'd been so noisy that the neighbors had already filed a complaint. They said that if it happened again, they'd have to leave, though he indeed planned to repeat it. It was difficult, though, as shame kept him from even stepping outside. Even if it was dirty and shameful, the debt had to be paid as soon as possible. Just as he attempted to stand, Min found himself back on the floor. Reluctantly, he admitted that his legs genuinely wouldn't hold him now. For a while, the gangster stared at his partner, trying to discern if he was telling the truth. In the end, he announced he'd go for food himself while the doctor could rest here. He also promised to inform the host that they'd be staying for another night. Additionally, he warned him to dismiss any thoughts of escape, and he should remember that if he ran, sooner or later he'd end up in his hands again. As for Min, he now wished he could openly say he needed a bit of endurance for that escape before they began threatening him. Over time, he fully realized that this was indeed a gangster, one of those who turned people into pulp. Now he'd have to face the consequences of his actions, for acting in the heat of the moment often led to this, 
Leaving that note was a great mistake. Suddenly his phone rang. In his current state, even reaching for it required a lot of effort. The screen read, Hippo, a friend of his father's from the old gangster days. It was indeed him, and Min immediately inquired about how he was doing. Everything was fine, and the man felt far more at peace after leaving the organization. Yet the reason for the call turned out to be a question of whether his father had returned. This question genuinely surprised him, as he hadn't spoken of it to anyone. It turned out that some detective had been circling around him for several days, claiming to be searching for Enta. That man's life had never been simple. Since Min was a young boy, he had caused no small amount of trouble for Jisoo and hadn't even been able to care for her before her death. It happened a year ago, and in the hospital, she declared she had two final wishes. First, she wanted to see Min finally become a specialist. But her son had sincerely no idea what his mother was even talking about. To help him become a doctor, she had worked tirelessly, day and night, so she needed to be discharged as soon as possible so that he could start caring for her. Yet, no matter how he spun it, her second wish was to see the father of her son. It was a mother's wish, one who had longed for her husband, and in the end, her wish went unfulfilled. At the funeral, people whispered among themselves, saying that the man of this house had left his wife and child and disappeared, with no news from him in ten years. There was hope that he might at least show up at his wife's funeral, but he didn't. Min was pulled out of his reverie by his father's friend. Suddenly, he mentioned rumors that this man might currently be in Pusan. Of course, it wasn't certain, but it might not hurt to go there and check once. For a moment, he thought of Khan Jugon and his dire warning. Yet there was no time to dwell on it. At the exit, he was awaited by the landlady who came to collect payment. But he pointed out that the wardrobe gangster would settle it. Soon enough, he arrived at the station he needed. Min was convinced he would find his father and then make him kneel and beg for forgiveness from his mother.